can the coronavirus actually contaminate your nail products? So if you work on somebody that has it, is that gonna affect your products? We're gonna talk about this right now on this talk. I just don't want my coffee ever contaminated because that would break my heart to ever throw away my coffee. McDonald's coffee, by the way, Trace. What do you think? I already drank mine. It was delicious. Yeah, you did pound yours. I like to slowly enjoy my coffee. Dude, it... It's like three hours. Yeah. It's, it's like two hours old. Yeah. It's got to be like iced it's, coffee it's by cool. now. It's like iced coffee, but I don't <laughs> care. If it's got caffeine, I'm going to take it down. Good with it. Um, don't do that. <laughs> Okay, someone sent a question. I don't know. I think it was through DM or comments. Um, if if I work on somebody that has the coronavirus and I don't know it, you know, will that contaminate my nail products? It's an interesting question. It's a very interesting question. Um, so first thing I want to say is we don't know enough about the coronavirus, okay, on what it can do, where it can live, temperatures, all that stuff, right? We, we do know, according to like the CDC and the FDA and the World Health Organization, that using a hand sanitizer um, or alcohol-based rub, hand rub, ABHR, as they, uh, it could be many different things, um, with a level of you know, X amount of percentage of ethanol or isopropanol should take care of it. Right. Right. I think that even the CDC is saying 60%. The World Health Organization has a few different requirements. Right. Um, right. They want, like, for example, in a hand sanitizer, um, it's got to be 80% ethanol with 0.125% of uh, hydrogen peroxide. And there's a couple other ingredients in there, which look is why at, we made. Look at you. Well, when we made our hand sanitizer, I, ha I had to know these things true because <laughs> I wanted uh, I to wanted make to make sure. sure it was it was up there. Um, and then for isopropanol, it's got to be seventy five percent with uh, you know point one two five percent hydrogen peroxide as well. Um, I think the CDC has a cup maybe a little bit different requirements. I'm not sure. Um, go look them up. You know, I'm not I'm not claiming to be the expert on this at all, but. Um, I know that takes care of it, okay? Um, most, um, like let's call them bacteria or viruses, can't live in nail products right? because of the, the chemical composition. It's not, um, you typically, if you have a water-based product, um, there's different requirements because that's where bacteria's, you know, viruses maybe can live and flourish, right? So you have to be a little bit careful. But something like nail liquids and nail polishes, um, nail powders, um, they typically can't live in those environments. They're they're just not. Um, they it's not uh, good environments for them to spread and. Flourish. flourish. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm having troubles explaining that. I just want to be very careful with 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 how I go about, you know, kind of describing this. Um, so that does not mean that you should be like, oh, cool, you know, I'm just going to take my gel polish and like, I don't, I'm just going to use it on everybody. Just, just wipe and, their face with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we still, you know, um, it's still good practice, right. you know, in you know, how you apply um, the cleanliness and uh, even like, let, let's take like dip powders, for example. You know, we've always, we've always talked about pouring. Right. Um, and the only reason why is because we've, even though um, nail powder is not an environment where, you know, bugs can grow, um, still, it's like, I just, me personally, I, I just look at myself. I don't want to put my finger in a jar where somebody else has put their finger in that jar. I'd rather have you take a bit and pour it. It just makes me feel more comfortable and more sanitary. It's presentation for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. That, that I am going that, you know, it just, it just feels cleaner. Absolutely. And then with California, at least, uh, 
we're not supposed to be working out of our jars anyway when it comes to acrylic or even gel. We're right. not supposed to work out of the pots. You're, you're dispense. Spo- you're supposed to dispense. <clears throat> so that that will help too. And plus presentation. For me right now, the presentation is going to be the whole thing. Yeah. Like a client walking in and just feeling comfortable because a lot of clients don't know that it can't live in powder or live right. in, again, not knowing COVID and everything exactly. But, um, you know, that, that presentation of first when a client walks through the door, please go wash your hands, yeah. comes back to the table, sanitize, you know, hand uh, sanitizer their hands. I'm wearing gloves, wearing a mask, the client's wearing a mask, you know, those kind of presentation that you're taking those extra steps will yeah. go a long way. Yeah. And, you know, I think a good point also is like you, you want to make sure, you know, I mean, the, the big thing right now is keeping your hands clean, right? Because if you, if you're, if you've been exposed to COVID and, um, or to somebody that has it and you touched something, a surface or whatever, and then you touch your face and they're saying that's, you know, one of the big ways that it does spread. Somebody comes in and let's say they potentially have it, obviously mask. You want to make sure like before you even start working on them, where you're placing the nail products with your implements, with your nail products needs to be clean. So that means their hands have to be completely sanitized. So like you said, Trace, they go wash their hands, they come back, even like, okay, let's get hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. Yep. And then in the preparation process, you know, we're going to assume that you're wearing gloves. In the prep process, you're cleansing their nail plate and just around with like, let's say our cleanser, which is which is swipe. Yep. So which once is, you're getting the dust and everything <clears throat> off, so you're cleansing again. You're cleansing again. That's, you know, it's, it's an alcohol acetone mixture, 99% isopropanol. Uh, with a little bit of acetone to help, you know, cleanse and a little bit of dehydration properties yeah. as well. So there's like multiple measures of making sure those surfaces are clean. Um, so chances are not high that it, your you nail know, products are going to get like contaminated that way. In general, that's just not how most nail products, you know, the ones that I'm talking about, nail liquid, nail powder, nail polishes, um, swipes, alcohol, uh, they don't get contaminated in that way. Um, you know, unless there's some like super bug that I don't know about right. that potentially could, you know what I mean? Again, I'm not claiming to be a doctor and like, or a scientist and researcher to know all this stuff. Right. But, um, that much I, I do know, you know, so um, I don't have all the data on coronavirus, but if alcohol kicks its ass, yeah. then um, as long as you sanitize properly beforehand, I don't think, I think you're going to be okay with your nail products. And even after your service though, like what do you do with your brush? What do you do with your implements? All that's so like, like what's sort all of All the, the implements get washed, scrubbed, cleaned and put in a disinfectant barbicide or something like that that is going you know follow the full time make sure your your uh disinfectant is not cloudy that it's clean um you're doing that and then um on top of it of course all your files we can't reuse files yeah this is, there, it is a poor surface right so i i know files can be expensive but it's you know it, it's just not worth it. Yeah. Files get thrown away and then new files for each client, new Arbor Band for each client. All the electrophile bits are also uh, completely cleaned, sanitized totally. each client. That's why it's really important to have multiple sets. Yeah, of course. That way, you, you know, you, it minimizes your time. And I think it's a, a good, you know, we've talked about understanding your cost per service. This is a great time to break that down. You can go back in one of our episodes and and watch that where we actually broke down, you know, how to figure out your cost per service. That'll tell you, you know what I mean? So that way, if, you know, a lot of people would be like, oh my God, no, a nail file, it's, you know, it's costing me a buck 25 per service. If you add that in your service and if you're charging what you should be charging, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. And what I used to do is I would just offer it to the client. They can have it. It was just used on them. Or I do make, right now, I would make a point of either offering it to them or throwing it away in front of them. 
Yeah. That way, I mean, it's just a visual thing. Like I said, presentation. Presentation is everything. Have you ever used, did you ever use an autoclave? I've seen those like mini autoclaves that are, they look amazing, you know, where you 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 individually wrap them, put them in the autoclave. Have you tried those? Or? No, I have not. I, I Back in the day, I looked into it. I didn't have a lot of room for it. Um, and they were way more expensive back then. Okay. Now they're pretty reasonable. Definitely, I would. I would invest in that. I love that. As yeah. like, if I'm a client and I walk into your salon and you have all your implements wrapped and you're dispensing your powders and everything into, you know, separate containers, obviously for, for use, um, and your nail files, you give it to them after the service, which you yeah. said, that's a nice little bonus for the client. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and then with the disclaimer, please don't use this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Please do not mess up your nails. Right. Exactly. Um, I would start like talking about that right now, like go on to your IG, your Instagram, your TikTok, your Twitter, and start talking about like, Hey, this is my setup. This is how I'm ensuring safety. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like start talking about how sanitary, um, how, when they come in, these are the steps that are going to be required. I've seen some techs do that. I've seen that. And then, um, even my gym that, you know, they haven't opened yet, but they have sent text messages to us telling us the steps that they will be taking as soon as just kind of keeping in communication, yeah. keeping their, you know, their, their, their name in it, you know, so we, we remember them, but also just letting us know the steps that they are doing right now, the full clean they've been doing and what they're going to do when we come back. Right. And you, you like, so you, you like do like a Pilates class, right? Mm -hmm. So like I could see like you minimize the number of people that come in, yeah. right? Everything is totally clean before you even touch it. Yep. You're spaced out enough to where, you know, there, there is that social distancing. Yep. And then um, when you're out, they go through the cleaning again. See, like that would make me feel comfortable. Yeah. And, yeah. And it does a couple things. If, if they're, they're, you know, doing this like once a week, they're sending out these little text messages. I'm remembering, okay, I really like this gym. I'm going to go back to this gym. Yeah. And it just makes me feel more comfortable that they're going through these cleaning process right now yep. and that they're going to be following it. Yeah. And I think like letting your clients know, you know, when you come in, you know, typically uh, viruses and bacteria don't spread inside of nail polishes, inside of nail powders, inside of nail gels, and inside of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, any other chemicals that, that you have. But here are the steps I'm taking to ensure that you are comfortable. Each client will have their own this. You're going to have your own file. You're going to have, I'm going to autoclave and make sure that all the implements are... Dude, yeah. you know, I'm going to have, if you get the Plexi or whatever, you know, I'm going to have this to make sure it, you're, you have to bring your own mask or I'll have a mask available for you. Whatever those steps are, that would make me feel comfortable. Right. And what I like about it also is it's telling clients, this is what I require because I have seen people go, I'm not going to go to this store because they're requiring me to wear a mask. So you're letting, so it's not a confrontational thing when they hit the door. Where's your mask? Right. You're already letting them know I'm wearing a mask. You're wearing a mask. You're to come wash your hands right away, you know, nicely, all this. But of course, that way, if a client doesn't want to do it, you're not having a scene <laughs> when they yeah. get there. Yeah. That type of communication and preparation ahead of time is going to be huge. In the end, um, I don't think, you know, as long as you take those proper steps, you're not going to have to worry about that potential contamination. Um, I don't believe that it's even possible that your nail products can be contaminated with coronavirus. Um, obviously, data is coming out unless this is some like insane, able to withstand, you know, these chemicals and feed off of them, which I don't think is possible. I think you're going to be okay, but still take those uh, precautions, make sure their hands are clean, all the steps that we've talked about. I think you're going to be okay. Let us know in the comments below. What steps are you taking um, in that process? How are you communicating with your clients? I think it'll help other people that are kind of in that uh, that zone right now of figuring out what to do. Tracy, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for joining us and we will see you next time on The Biz Talk. Mm -hmm.